Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to another video by Training Reviews. I've got the iPhone XS Max here, I've been using it for about a week ever since it came out and I'm just going to give you a quick run through of the top 5 things I like about it just using it in day to day general use for the past week and the top 5 things that I don't like about the iPhone XS Max so let's get straight into it Right so number 5 on the top things I really like about the phone I think the option to have 4K recording at 60 frames per second for longer than 5 minutes has been a, a really good advantage so you can actually use your phone now for a lot of cinematic shooting, for lengthy videos if you're out with your family or your friends, you're on holiday and if you really want to get some good footage from wherever you may be then that is a really good bonus because previously especially in a lot of Android phones and especially on my Samsung S9 Plus that I have separately the recording is limited to 5 minutes only at 4K 60 frames per second so they've removed that restriction and I think that's just a really good feature to have on a phone so there's no point locking you in for a limited amount of time of course that's depending on how much space you have so you might not be able to record a certain amount of time depending on the storage space you have left on your phone but again it's good to have the option to record more than five minutes number four i think the portrait mode on this looks really good i've compared this with my friend's iphone 10 and i've had a looked at my dad's iphone 7 as well and checked the portrait modes on there compared to the camera lenses that they've got on the iphone 10s max i think they've took that to another level I've taken pictures with portrait modes comparing that with my Samsung S9 Plus and a couple of other phones. My friend's got the Google Pixel 2 XL. I've compared them side by side and again I still think the 10s Max is definitely winning on that part. I think for a lot of people that are looking to buy a phone, portrait mode pictures are quite a good selling point. So I definitely recommend getting this phone if you're really into taking portrait pictures. So that's a really good plus point for me. Number three, the battery life. I know it's not the greatest on, on the iPhone 10s Max but Having the low power mode on this so that you can save a little bit more battery, make it last a lot longer, I think it's been really useful for me. Now I've just turned it on and it's extended the battery life for another 3-4 hours which I think is, is quite a good amount of time. So having that option when you have about 15-10% left, turn it on and you'll be able to just get through until you can find yourself a charging port to get that up and running and fully charged again. Number two, swiping through the background apps. I like the fact that you can just swipe at the bottom here and go through all of the background apps that you've got open. Rather than going through the background task manager, you can just quickly swipe right from the bottom and go back to the previous one. And it's just a very convenient and time-saving way to cycle through all of your background apps that you have open. And lastly, number one, I think the iOS 12 UI is just really smooth, it's very gesture-based, and there's no other Android phone or any other iPhone that's come close to the smooth gestures that I've experienced with this. Just cycling through, I think the interface looks nice, it's very slick, it's modern, and having the ability to swipe from different parts of the phone as well to do different things, like from the middle top, you bring down your notification center, from the top right, you bring down your quick launch tray, and then from the bottom, obviously, you have your apps and uh, background apps as well. So for me, those are the top five things I've really liked about using the phone for the past week. Now, looking at the top five things I don't like with this phone from using it just for general day-to-day -day use. And number five, they've actually removed the battery percentage. So you're not able to turn that on the top menu bar there at all times just to view it. You have to actually swipe down into the app tray to see the percentage. In previous iPhones, you have the option to turn that on and make it visible at all times, but apparently you don't have that at this moment on iOS 12. So that's a shame for this iPhone XS, but hopefully they can um, add that in in a future software update. Number four, I'm very much used to having a fingerprint scanner to unlock the phone. I know Face ID is really good. It's fast, it's convenient. You have the pin code as well, but I'm just used to having the fingerprint scanner in the back, or even if you have it on the front, it's just really quick and easy to do. I find sometimes when I'm on a, a train, which is really crowded and I'm standing up and I'm packed, I can barely look down to pick the phone out of my pocket and I just want to use my fingerprint to unlock it and just look further down. But there are you know, rare situations when you might come across not using a face ID or not conveniently using a pin lock, you just want to get straight into it. Then uh, a fingerprint scanner is just really convenient. Hopefully they can add that in on the back in future updates. But again, that's just my personal preference. Other people might not be bothered about fingerprint scanning to open the phone, but that's just up to you guys. Number three is the dynamic wallpapers. It does come with a set of few dynamic wallpapers at the moment, but when I first got the phone, I was selecting one to choose for the home screen background. 
and it was assigning it but then it never appeared now i've had a couple of issues where they've not appeared on both the lock screen and the home screens sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and it was a little bit buggy i've not really had the best of experience using this uh, dynamic wallpaper it's completely different to the android ones where you have live wallpapers and they just go straight in and it works first time for some reason when i first used this the second day i had the phone i was changing the dynamic wallpapers none of them were being assigned to the home screens like i uh, set the option for but now it's working at the moment it's intermittent and i've just not had the greatest experience and i'm sure there's some other apps you can get to download more dynamic wallpapers I will try to do that in the future, but nonetheless, that's one of the things I didn't like about it. Number two, I think the phone is very slow to charge. Obviously, it, there is an option to buy the expensive fast charging cable as well, which I think a lot of people won't do from the outset because you spent a lot on the phone already and you don't want to spend further amount to just get the fast charger with it. But it's very slow to charge and I think that's a bit of a problem because overall, the battery life is not the greatest for me. Now, I've used phones where they last a day and a half uh, on pretty much day-to-day -day average use, but this one, it run downs quite quickly. Even though I have minimal use with the phone, I don't really use it for a lot of gaming or anything like that, but even then, the battery is not lasting the full day, and when I do go and charge it, it takes hours and hours to charge. Now, Phone Arena did this test where they check the charging times on a various set of phones. If you have a look at the chart now, you can see here, that the iPhone XS Max in minutes, it actually takes 209 minutes to charge fully from a flat battery. Compared to my current Samsung S9 Plus, which only took 107 minutes, that's almost half the time that it takes to charge the iPhone the full amount. And again, obviously the battery is a little bit bigger on the S9 Plus as well, and it charges a lot quicker compared to the iPhone XS where the battery is slightly smaller in size and it's taking even longer, I think that's not a great strategy for Apple to use. And then if you look at something like the OnePlus 6, they completely smashed it with their fast charging, 80 minutes to a full battery from zero percentage. So for me, you know, the iPhone XS Max is losing in that battle. And number one, the thing that I disliked the most about it is actually the price of the phone. Starting off at 1100 pounds, going up to almost 1500 pounds, I think for paying that much money, you can actually even buy a car for that price if you wanted to but and compared to phones that are already out there that are probably 50 to 80 percent less the price of the iphone 10s you can pretty much do the exact same things so i'm thinking back thinking okay this one is 1100 pounds did i actually spend a good enough amount of money to get my money's worth probably not i think there's a lot of phones that can do almost the same things maybe even better things than this that i can pay half the price for of course they wouldn't be a trillion dollar company if they didn't charge maximum amount of money and have that customer base who are willing to pay that amount as well but there is a still a lot of people probably even more that are not willing to pay over a thousand pound for any phone not just the iphone so for me i hope that they can make really good quality iphones in the future for a lot less price than a thousand pounds but it seems like the way they're heading, maybe the iPhone 11 might be almost 2,000 pounds. And I think there's gonna be a lot of people buying that as well. So good for them. That might not be good for me, but again, that's everyone's opinion. So those are the top five things I like and top five things I don't like in the past week of just using the phone. Obviously these things will change over time. If I use it after a month, two months, three months, six months, then my opinions may change. But let me know what you guys think. If there's any other things that you really like about the phone that you want to mention, if there's anything you really don't like about the phone, then please do let me know in the comments below. Other than that, I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you next time.